Marian, we're talking about Psalm 23, and this is a psalm that a lot of people love. It's very near and dear to their heart. Um, it's very meaningful. We had uh, two settings that we recorded, actually. It was the only psalm that we covered twice yesterday in our recording, one with a, a, a choir and then another one for the scripture audio uh, memorization track. Um, we were just talking about rest uh, in the context of Psalm 15 and how a, a man who does these things will not be moved, and that's how he's blessed. Um, what is it that you think uh, is, is, is one thing that people miss in Psalm 23 as they come to it, that maybe they read it fast, they skip over it, oh yeah, I've heard this before. Uh, what do we miss about Psalm 23? Yeah, it, it is such a, a powerful psalm and in, in, in the reason uh, why it is used so often at graveside and funerals and we've memorized it even if we haven't tried and it becomes so familiar because it's a very rich psalm. Uh, in today's time, when we're all about wanting a personal peace and affluence and, and a calm and, and escape from all of the troubles of the world, uh, as Derek Kidner said, this psalm is not about escape, it's about peace. Mm. And when you look at it, uh, there's peace, even in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think it is um, read at, at funerals quite a bit, because here is a, a transcendence that this psalm is bringing us up to. Uh, it's showing this, the Lord being the good shepherd of his sheep, and yet it ends on this eternal note that we're going to be enjoying him forever. Um, so I think as we go through a psalm like this, we should recognize that it is not God's desire to remove us from all the trials of life. In fact, I think even in the psalm, you can see where there are trials designed for us, but he has gone before us to prepare the way for those and for us to endure and for us to have peace. And sometimes God sets these settings in our lives, as he did in Job's, in order to magnify his glory um, and the way that we respond. Because we, we must remember that we are being observed. Um, and as the scripture says in Ephesians 3.10, that the manifold wisdom of God is being made known unto the principalities and powers as they observe us, the church. And as uh, God has things to say and things to do and desires to show forth his glory way beyond our visible uh, understanding, um, this is a, something that he often takes us through great trials, giving us the strength and bringing us into a closer relationship with him that otherwise would not have happened if he hadn't have brought us there. So that's really what brings us the greatest joy and blessedness. And sometimes there's a means to the end and we should not be about um, just the end uh, of getting there, but oftentimes God's more in, um, um, interested in how we respond in the means because he's got our end already taken care of. 